Now, next example. The table also can help me when I know the length and I want to find the angle. Because now I have it the same, well, not the same right triangle, I have a right triangle that is 10 foot on this side, 22 feet as the hypotenuse. Uh, I keep on using the opposite over hypotenuse, but that's okay. We're just, that's fine. So I want the opposite compared to hypotenuse is equal to 10 to 22. And I want to know what angle has that. So what I could do is I take, I divide 10 divided by 22. And this gives me 0.454545. You see that? I go to my table and I look under the opposite compared to the hypotenuse column. And I'm looking, and these are sequential because the angles go bigger and bigger and bigger. So this. I know this doesn't show up very well. I'll show it to you tomorrow. Um, so 0.45 is somewhere right here. You can't not see this. Is 0.45. 399 and the next one's 0.46 so this one looks pretty close right here and then I look over and I see which angle it is and it says 27 so that the ratio of that would would make the angle that has that ratio is, is about 27 degrees and I know the next question you're going to ask me uh, where do I get those tables and how do I use them, you know, I need to carry that around. Well, that's what Mr. Word had to do. That's maybe what your parents had to do, but that's not what you have to do. Because um, we don't always write down the opposite hypotenuse, things like that. Hipparchus, uh, back then, I'm making sure actually, we gave these ratios names. And the opposite hypotenuse, that is called the sine. The and what it was next? Adjacent to hypotenuse. That is called the cosine. And then the last ratio was the opposite compared to the uh, adjacent. And that's called the tangent. So, and I've, whenever you're talking about the sine function, you're talking about the ratio in a right triangle of the opposite side compared to the hypotenuse. The cosine function compares the adjacent side of a right triangle to the hypotenuse. And this is where you're thinking that right there, and that's theta, that's, that's we did that before, that's the angle uh, variable. And tangent would be opposite to adjacent. Now, going back to our example, where do I find my table? Our table is luckily inside our calculator, right? Uh, so what we are going to do is use our calculator to tell us the angle measurement. The calculator has all of them in there. And in this case, uh, I, well, I'll just like first thing, let's go. First thing first. When, before using my calculators, every time, you're going to have to hit mode. And under mode, you're going to have to change the angle to in measurement into degrees and hit enter. Okay? Very important. Radians are another way of measuring angles. We are going to stick with degrees for now. We'll do radians in the future. So, and let's just check. If I said uh, sine, let's do one that we know. One that we know is from the front, right? We know that the sine of 30 degrees would be the opposite to compare to the hypotenuse. It should be one half. So if I put sine of 30 degrees, I should get one half, and it gives me 0.5. All right? That's one half. Uh, the adjacent, it, you know it's going to give me a, it's not going to give me root 3 over 2. 
and the adjacent that's that's the cosine and over here the button is cos is an abbreviation for cosine if i could do cosine of 30 degrees gives me a long decimal if i check my decimal compared to what we wrote down earlier root 3 divided by 2 and you'll see that it is the same number great so how do we get the angle once we have the relationship in this case I'm going to compare the opposite to hypotenuse so I'm going to use the sign and I'm going to go backwards on the sign and that is called an inverse function and the inverse function of trigon trigonometric functions are used to obtain an angle from any of the angles trigonometric ratios for instance if I do the inverse sine of one half you know what that is so what angle has a relationship of opposite to hypotenuse of one half and that's going to be 30 degrees in our case here the inverse function so the inverse sine I'm going to write inverse I'll do The symbol for inverse sine is that. And that by no means is the multiplicative inverse of sine. That is not one over the sine. That look, it's not a power of sine. It's just a notation. Uh, one way you can also write it, sometimes they, they use capital sign like that. The Another way of wanting the same thing is called the arc sine. And computer pro programmers don't even write the word arc sign. They'll call it the A sign. Those all mean the same thing. That means I know the relationship of opposite to hypotenuse. And I want to know the angle. All of these mean the same thing. So I like inverse sign. I'm also happy with in, uh, arc sign. And these are just notations. So on my calculator... The inverse are right above the, uh, the, the normal sine, cosine, tangent. So I hit second sine. I put in my relationship. I'm going to put it in as a fraction. 10 to 22. And I get 27.035. So very close to my 27 degrees that I found on my table. Here are today's check for understanding problems. No calculator or table needed. All right. So I just want you to write the ratios for the sine of theta. Theta is at that angle. If you're standing at theta, what is the sine ratio? If you're standing at theta, what's the cosine ratio or the tangent ratio? If, and then on the second problem, if you're, what's the sine if you're standing at T? Or the cosine if you're standing at C? And then how about the tangent when you're standing at C? And we shall, let's, let's just put some letters here. There's one A, B, C, two A, B, C. Okay. Straightforward. Just give me the ratios. Good luck. See you tomorrow.